But yeah, for those, you know, how, how many? What we only we only have about five five of you. <laughs> they were they were at the class I did many years ago on how to respectfully witness to Catholics. Uh, basically, the single family only. They are this. They are the single and only. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 19 and 20, Romans 2, still. Uh, and our uh, confident, let me see, I do the, <coughs> yes, I did, the commentary. Uh, and, our, and our confident that uh, each of you, yourselves, are a uh, guide of the blind, a light of them which are uh, in the darkness. The Jews were, you know, he's talking to Christians now who were Jews, who, uh, who will understand the connection that, that we just got done making as slow as we go on through the verses. They're supposed to be the light to the world. You know, they need to get out and evangelize now. You know, he's, he's exhorting them to get out and do what we're supposed to do and, and evangelize, uh, evangelize the world. Now, we know America is going away. It's going away soon. But we don't know who's to get saved and who's not. So we and, and we don't know which babies are going to be saved at the abortion clinics and which ones aren't. We you know, we do, you know we've been doing a sodomite parades. We don't know which people might come out of it or and might not. So so we did that until recently when the mockery after they got their uh, sodomite marriage has been just so great. It was time you know the Holy Spirit uh, told me a couple of years ago uh, you need to be thinking about uh, shaking the dust off your feet and and, and not coming out anymore. So we, we actually, you know, actually went through the symbol, symbolism the last time, you know, the summer when we had the summer parade. Go ahead. You said babies. We don't know which babies are saved. No, which ones are going to be saved and which ones aren't. So that's why we go to the clinics to see about, you know, to oh, see if I we see. can convince the, the moms and dads to save the babies. Save the baby from being from, killed, from, not from being killed. Yeah, yes, to save the babies from being murdered at the abortion clinic. Yeah, yeah the physical, not the spiritual. Yeah, that's yes. the first step. Sorry about that if I misunderstood. Verse 20. Uh, 19 pointer together. Uh, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes. Um, the foolish is anyone who is not a Christian. God says they're fools. Now, we don't want to tell some. we don't want to be judgmental and tell somebody they're a fool. You know, you just turn around and say, yeah, God says you're a fool. You only say there is no God. God says you're a fool. All right? You can say that. <laughs> you know, uh, don't, don't pretend to be God in the, and, and, and judge them. Okay? Uh, a uh, teacher of babes. We're talking spiritual here with this. Uh, we're not talking physical children. Uh, somebody 90 years old can be a babe in Christ. And somebody 10 years old can be the teacher. Okay? Uh, it depends on your spiritual growth and where you're at. These people were in the process of being converted to Christianity. They did not, remember, they did, at this point in time, they did not have a full canon of the New Testament scriptures. That wasn't canonized until uh, 393 at the Council of Hippo. Uh, at, in 62 AD, about the time this was written, you only, had a, you only had three, four, maybe, books that had already been written. Okay? Um, you might, you know, uh, you had the Book of Mark, which was probably around 45. Uh, uh, Luke, you know, hadn't written, uh, you know, his stuff yet. Uh, I think uh, Paul, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Paul had already written uh, first and or uh, first and maybe second Thessalonians. You really didn't have much written down. Part of the reason why God had had uh, uh, Paul go to Rome and put him in prison was to slow him down so he could write the New Testament. Okay, there, you know, God uses everything for for His advantage. Now, too bad he had to die, you know, getting his head chopped off. Uh, and that's coming back. <laughs> you don't want to be in the yeah. tribulation period. You're in you know, Revelation 20, verse 4, second half of the tribulation period, if you're a Christian, Satan, uh, the Antichrist in dwelt with Satan is not going to worry about you. He knows you've got eternal security. Uh, he doesn't want you to witness anybody else. He's gonna, just going to chop your head off. Okay? And get, and get rid of you. Uh, and for those who think there's a post-trib rapture, how are you going to get there? If there's enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian, <coughs> you, you ain't going to make it. Okay? You'll be part of the dead in Christ rise first. Uh, uh, a teacher of, uh, of babes which uh, has the form of knowledge and the truth of the law. We have today, just like back then, we have the truth of the law. There, many of the things in the law still apply today. Okay? But a bunch of those don't apply anymore. All right, you know, the thing, you know, we don't sacrifice the animals. We're not doing an ephod <coughs> of uh, grain or flour or, you know, whatever. 
uh, you know, things like this to satisfy the law. Some of those, some of those laws don't apply anymore, like uh, not going more than a furlong uh, on, 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 the, uh, on the Sabbath, okay? Um, and I don't think it's a wrong thing to, uh, to eat dairy with, with meat. Okay, so you can, you, know, you, you can have your cheeseburger, just, just, <laughs> just uh, do it. In, you know, all things, all things in moderation because uh, too, too much weight on, you know, too many calories in there, and they're not necessarily good calories. The only time I'm doing it is when I'm uh, on my trips and, and I want a quick meal. Um, so, so we have the truth of the law. We are, we are, we are under the spirit of the law. The things that actually apply today, you know, and that's a whole class on dispensationalism, which is. Huge, hang on, and then and then, uh, uh, but there's certain things back there that, that that don't apply anymore. Go ahead. This catechism. It was just a word that the Catholic Church adopted for their for their all the all the dogmas and traditions that they okay. have. Well, Catholic kids still go to catechism, right? Yes, yes, and, and yes. it's these laws then that they're learning. That Moses? <laughs> they are they're learning the Catholic traditions and dogmas. Okay. Okay. They're, right. learning, they're, they're right. learning it out of the out of the nineteen ninety four new new cat new uh, uh, catechism, all right, that they have. Uh, you hear again we will have a Catholic tell us about it. <laughs> Former Catholic isn't, isn't the Catholic catechism the Catholic Bible? Basically it is. That's right. They don't use the they don't use a, a you know the New American Bible, NAB, they've been named, is an NASB for, for the Catholics. They have changed a bunch of things in, in there along with adding this deuterocanonical books, the second canon, and I was, you know, and as I said before, if, they, if those seven books in the Old Testament are supposed to be there, then they would be primary canon, they would be secondary canon. Mm -hmm. and, you know, okay, another Catholic. Yeah. Uh, when I went to Catholic school, and I did that for about eight and a half years, uh, if you brought a King James Bible, a Bible of you any were, kind. You were told huh. to get it out of there. That you were you were not to read the Bible at all. You were only to listen to what the priest or the or the uh, uh, the nuns in church, the nuns in schools. In church yeah, so would tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And right. I find it interesting right. that you have dogma and cat. Original thinking. See yeah. and remember what the what this word says. When you de when you deny me, you you know before yeah. man, I will deny you before the Father. Yes. Isn't yes. this yes. the word of God? And isn't Jesus the word? Absolutely. They're going through a denial of Christ, and the people don't get it. Okay. They go ahead. Yes. Wow. Wow. Two. Two. Yo. 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 I know it's normally it's normally one one maybe every six weeks. We got two and five minutes. Wow. I I've hit a nerve. And they have a special book that's called the the Catechism. It's separate from the Bible. Yes. The new Catechism. 1994 is what they use. And all the grade school kids get a copy of this, and they were to study it, and then the priest comes in and teaches the class. Right. Yes. That's how it works. Do they and, and, and they're stuff yeah. and oh. and you know they have they they mix doctrines of the Bible with their dogmas and traditions, okay? They're watering it down because all the dogmas and traditions actually violate Scripture, and they got things in there like uh, paragraph eight forty one that says Muslims, not not Arabs, Muslims. That's the religion, just like Jew is the religion, okay? Are going to heaven because they believe in a creator. Mm -hmm. Oh no, they're not. Mm -hmm. Since we, you know, since when is uh, believing in a creator a, you know, uh, a, a criteria to get to heaven? Jesus died on the cross for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus was only a prophet; he wasn't God. He didn't die on the cross. Okay, he didn't rise from the dead. Okay, just everything with Jesus is thrown out. Okay, how are they? You know. And you know, and I'll point this out to Catholics, and they normally don't come back because when they start pointing out things they got wrong in yeah. the catechism, they figure I got other things. Got I just gave stuff. them one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, is is that in the ninety? Ninety four, the current one. 
Oh, about the Muslim? Yes. Well, then why wasn't it in the original category? I don't know if it was or wasn't. Oh, I have okay. a 94 in okay. there. Okay. They never okay. mentioned it in mine, the one that I had. Okay. okay. It was never mentioned. Okay. Well, uh, do you have a prior 90, the 94? Back in the 60s. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You yes. still got it? Thanks. Yeah. In the house somewhere. Yeah. Well, I have to say something. Uh, yes, go I ahead. Don't worry, we're good. Oh, I converted. This is, this is, this is a secondary, this is primary, this, we change this there to a primary go. class in Cavazos. Go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, I converted to being a Catholic in 1977 from being a Lutheran, and I had to go to instructions with right. the priest, and yeah. they gave me a catechism. I had to learn the whole catechism. Oh, yes. I right. had to go every week, you yes. know, and train yes. with the priest. Saturday night catechism class. Uh, no, or when, I when had, was yours? It was one and one with okay. the priest. One okay. One. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So, well, because yeah. you were probably the only ones. So. Yeah, I, <coughs> I was. Yeah. yeah. And you okay. had to learn the whole catechism. catechism yeah, yeah. So you learn you learned a whole out. lot of things that violate scripture, you know. And you know, and unfortunately, uh, which which were you, did you say you were in the Missouri Senate? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is the bet? Which is the best of the Lutherans? Okay. Mm -hmm. But now they're starting to fall away. Okay, uh, you know, is you know, Lutheran is still Catholic light. Mm -hmm. It's still very, very close. Okay, there's only there's only a few differences. Uh, you know, you, you, instead of transubstantiation, you know, consubstantiation. Jesus, Jesus mingles his body and blood with the with the elements. Okay, go ahead. So this is like the they teaching them why they like these candles and why they go to confession. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the kind of well, stuff. and they and they pervert verses to do the the, uh, the okay. confession. Confess your sins one to another, so you come tell us. Well, during the Middle Ages, uh, that's part of how the uh, the Catholic Church got so rich. The you had the lords and the peasants. The lords owned the land and had all the money, and the peasants did the work for the lords. Well, when the lords went in to do their confession, uh, the priest would remember what he said, and when they wanted something in the church, they would tell him, "You need to give X amount of dollars, or I'm going to forget that, that that you confessed that to me." And I'm, I'm you know, and I'm, I just might, I just might tell the mafia. <laughs> This is part of why it was called the Dark Ages. You can still buy forgiveness for like divorce. Yes. By going to the the, the priest, the diocese, oh, yeah. and saying, you know, I want to get this divorce, and if you pay them, right, they'll make it so that right. God will forgive you. Right. Oh my goodness. See, they they this is part this is part of the uh, the uh, uh, apostolic succession with the popes. That they are Christ on earth and they control things on earth, you know. God, God didn't give it up. Okay, Jesus didn't give, didn't give it up. He's still the foundation of the church. Okay, the Holy Spirit is the one. See, we confess to God what we've done wrong, and it's between Him and us because He's the only one that can forgive us. See, all, see, if I do something against one of you, I need to come tell you and ask you to forgive. But most of the time, we're doing stuff. Uh, you know, against you know, against our body or whatever. You know, you know, things are just uh, with us, I should say, mm -hmm. and that's a sin against God. It's not a sin against any one of you. Mm -hmm. I need to go to Him always for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we, you know, so that's where that's where the difference is. See, you know, and 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 of course they think they've gone all the way back to Jesus. Well, the first church in Acts in Acts nine four was called the Way because of John fourteen six. I'm Jesus is the way the truth and life. Later on they were called Christian. It was a word of derision, you know, you know, and they and they adopted it as you know as being a badge of honor. Uh, they became the Imperial Catholic Church in three twelve when Constantine made it, you know, stop the persecution. Um, and uh, you know, but but it was controlled by by Rome. That's that's a part of why they have the name Rome in them now. When the Roman Empire fell in 476, shortly after that, is you know they kind of took their own authority at that point in time, and that's when the Roman Catholic Church started. And somewhere, depending on who you're talking to, uh, it's either 500 or 606 is when the world went into the Dark Ages. We're talking spiritual Dark Ages. That's what it's about. Catholic Church has no idea that it was a spiritual Dark Age. Hmm. And you know, and that lines up with the Church of Thyatira. I'm going to give you time to repent, okay? Uh, and then, and then he waits a thousand years. A day to God is a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. After a thousand years, it came out. The the Roman Catholic <clears throat> Church became the Church of Sardis. You are now the dead Church. Because, but even so, I'll save some of you out of it. That's you know, the people. Some of the people where we you know we have friends that are saved, but most of them we see are not, unfortunately. So. 
Um, and we didn't, you know, and they always give credit to Martin Luther for, because of his 95 thesis on the door on uh, Halloween, how appropriate, you know, why it's holy to Satanism yeah. in uh, 1517. When to me, what, to, what I teach in this class is that uh, um, it really started with the Gutenberg printing press. It was created somewhere between 1438 and 1440. And then when I, what I looked up on the internet was, uh, you know, with a, with a search engine, that uh, September 30th of 1450 is when he started mass producing Bibles. They would have been in German, Gutenberg, good, good German name, okay, uh, which started the, which started, which got Luther going, okay, to some degree. But, uh, but because people could now buy Bibles, uh, they were still fairly expensive, but they were, you know, but people who love God would, would be buying Bibles. Before that, they were all handwritten. <coughs> They were, they were, they cost a fortune. They were padlocked to the, uh, to the pulpits. The pulpits didn't, didn't move, okay? Uh, and they didn't, and they didn't have chain cutters like we do today. <laughs> okay? Uh, so people could buy the Bibles. They start reading and saying, hey, wait a minute. Catholic Church is saying this and the Bible's saying that. How, you know, help me understand this. And the Catholic Church had no answers for it. And Luther finally understood Romans 8.1 about salvation by you know by faith alone, uh, he finally got through his thick skull. You know they you know when you know see he was he was a Catholic priest and he go and nobody wanted to hear his confessions. <laughs> they took hours <laughs> every day, hours. Okay, um, so the the Bible got in, the, got in the hands of people. They started asking all these questions, and Luther gets the credit because he then stuck the ninety five. You know, uh, the things on the door that, you know, the Catholic Church had problems with. And that's part of why the Catholic Church at the Council of Trent, uh, you know, uh, about 30 years later, you know, uh, 1545 and 46, added the seven extra books to the Old Testament to justify the dogmas and traditions, such as purgatory, okay, and paying to get out. Now, in your Douay version, uh, you had to pay 2,000 drachmas to get out, uh, but they they had some kind of leniency that in uh, the new the, the uh, new American Bible, the current one they accept, it's, it's not only 1,200. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you Bible get one well, yeah, I just want to mention, yeah. I had mentioned it previously, but I'll mention it again. There were two things that brought about the Bible to the common people. That was first the Gutenberg Press. Yes. And I, my family's been in the printing industry for over 70 yeah. years, but yeah, also that months, plus yeah. uh, the Black Death, because the, the paper was expensive, but when they took the clothing from the dead people, they mixed it in and made paper out of it. So that's why you see many of these older Bibles that lasted so long, because a lot of the Bibles were made out of like hemp and uh, long-lasting cloth that were made yeah. from the people that died. Rather than being made from parchment, which falls apart mm -hmm. after a while, okay? Which is, you know, that's, that's true too. Uh, commentary on uh, Romans 2, 19 and uh, 20. Uh, <clears throat> confidence that he would be saved by the law. The, Jews, uh, the Jew was uh, convinced that he had been uh, made righteous and therefore was able to assume four roles. A guide uh, of the blind, the blind being the uh, Gentiles uh, in an uh, un-Jewish darkness. Uh, the light of them which uh, are in darkness, the Gentiles needed to be enlightened by the Jews who the Jew who was uh, enlightened by the law, an instructor of the fool, uh, the, the foolish, uh, because he did not know the law. Uh, the Gentile was the was the fool. Uh, today, today is anybody who is not a Christian. God says they're, they're a fool. You cannot you cannot look at creation, you know the Romans one eighteen to twenty, and say there 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 is no God, there is no Creator. You will be without excuse. And how many people say, oh, you know, this is part of why we have devolution. Okay, and, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, somebody, uh, I, I found a link of uh, Ken Holbein uh, uh, debating a uh, professor, I think it was at uh, Rutgers. And uh, uh, Ken Holbein having all, uh, you know, all of his presentation and, uh, you know, uh, and given all the, all the uh, uh, documentation to, for its proof, and the uh, and, and a uh, uh, you know a professor from the university got up and said, you know, it's all wrong, it's all this way, but he never gave any proofs on anything. <laughs> okay, you know, it was really 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 interesting to see to see you know uh, a devolutionist trying to uh, uh, justify what he what he believes in. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, yes, it's my word rather than evolution. I have, you know, <laughs> having my own lexicon for those who don't remember. Uh, fourth, a teacher of babes. 
uh, the Gentiles were immature, an object of uh, Jewish uh, disgust. Um, they had a pride issue. You know, they were the ones that were, you know, that were the, um, um, the called of God in the Old Testament, okay? They had favor from God, but how many times do you say they were stiff-necked people? Yeah. You know, about 30, if I remember, it's about 30 times in the Old Testament. It talks about them being, being stiff-necked people. And, uh, uh, you know, the pride got in the way. Remember, pride, pride is basically the, the first sin. You know, the first sin for all of us, okay? Uh, and we can fall back into the trap at, at, at any time. Remember, that was Satan's first sin. Pride entered in. I will do this. I'll do that. You know, the five eyes that are in uh, Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. The one time we have Lucifer, who then became Satan. Um, it, you know, it's not just it's not just the uh, the fallen angels that that had the pride. Satan and, and he is, you know, whoever, and, and one third of the angels that fell with him, uh, the stars, as the uh, Bible puts it, uh, you know, for their, you know, uh, as he refers to them. Uh, it can happen to each one of us, and uh, uh, pride is what uh, keeps people from uh, getting converted. Um, they don't. Uh, they don't let themselves get broken down and realize that, that they that they need a savior, that there really is some something after this life. Um, the problem, you know, when when God blesses a people, they have a tendency to fall to fall away. Why do I need God? I got all this other stuff, you know, and I'm enjoying myself. Why do I need God? I don't need Him to put barriers on on me enjoying myself. Okay, but we are blessed by God because we are a Christian nation. The ungodly think they're going to get rid of God and still have all the stuff that they have now. Okay, and that's. That's not going to work. It, is, it has never worked before. And, uh, uh, you know, the old adage, uh, those who don't learn, learn history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's the road America's going down. And by, before Comrade Abomination leaves office, I fully expect him to wipe out the economy. And he's not going to leave, leave a nation for, you know, and he can do it today with, you know, with a lot of different things. One of them is the quantitative easing. You know, for, you know, how many months they put $85 billion a month into the bond market? Then they dropped to $75 billion. They probably could put close to a trillion dollars uh, in, it, in it. All they have to do is say, I want it back to pay, out, to pay, the, you know, pay off some of the national debt. The you know, bond market immediately collapses. Stock market immediately collapses. Everything immediately collapses. You know, it almost happened in 2008. The next time it is going to happen. All right? And the Democrats, the Democrats were the one that forced it with the Dodd-Frank <coughs> laws, which, by the way, you know, you know, we're, not, we're not really lovers of, uh, of either of the Bushes here. Uh, but George W. warned about it 17 times. The news media would never report on it because when, because they knew it was going to happen. Okay, they, they they were in collaboration with the Democrats to to force the economy to collapse so they could put a Democrat in the White House and get you know and hopefully get the Senate and House you know legislator and, and whatever else and continue to destroy America. So they didn't report him ever saying it. All right. Uh, he started back in 2002 warning, warning about it, okay? And uh, uh, Congress never did anything about it. Uh, you, know, the Repub you know, the Republicans that want to do something about it are so few with, you know, uh, the only ones that, that had backbones. The others didn't want to make waves because they were, you know, uh, the news media was going to skew them. And, and they didn't, you know, so uh, nobody ever said anything about it. So when it happened in 2008, they could, they, they, they could blame Bush. He was the one in office. It's his fault. But of course, nothing ever happened to Clinton when he was in office. Okay, nothing ever happened to uh, Comrade Abomination when he was in office. Oh, that's right. I shouldn't say Clinton. I should say Slip Got to use, got to, got to use the lexicon version. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one to twenty-three. Uh, you therefore, which uh, teach uh, others, teach uh, each of you, not y yourself. You know, and he's asking the question: Why don't you teach yourself? We're no longer under the law. We're now under grace. Okay, Jesus paid the sin debt. He went to the cross. We don't have to do the animal sacrifice anymore. That's why God got rid of the temple in 70 AD. He allowed it to happen. So they had no place to go to do the sacrifices. That that would help them realize, you know, why would God allow his temple uh, to, be, uh, to be destroyed when... They had to do the sacrifices, and he said, and he said it was a sweet smell in his nose for the, you know, for the sacrifices to come up to him because they, you know, because then they were being faithful to him, and he could repent. He could he for, they were repenting, and he could forgive them. So it was you know uh, it was a means of keeping them humble. And here it's gone, 
and they can't do the sacrifice anymore, and that should have logically got to a whole bunch of Jews and said, uh, you know, uh, uh, so there must be something different because God allowed his temple to go away again. Yeah, go ahead. That temple that you talked about, is that where the Wailing Wall is today? Yes, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's the stones that were all left, taken down? Well, you only have the wall, it's the temple. The temple was the, the temple part was the wall, so we're not going to come, there, that every stone was going to be up, uprooted. And the reason why they destroyed the temple, the Romans did, was to get, or the, the, the invaders, was to take the gold out of the cracks. Well, the some, some of it, yeah, they, the, you know, they, 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 they wanted the gold too, but it was, it was, you know, this was under Nero, yeah. and Nero was blaming the Jews for everything. So this, you know, this was, this was, uh, you know, him showing force against the Jews for what the, you know, for, for uh, supposedly burning Rome when, when he did it. So okay. they're going to rebuild this temple now because they've got everything. Then, we, yeah, this is, the second temple has been gone since 70 AD. They're going to build a third temple. Mm -hmm. That's the one they're getting ready to build now. That's the one that's going to get all and the Muslim, they, Muslims all upset, right? Oh, yeah, and start, and start the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Which is going to wipe out all the Muslims. While well, God wipes them out, what, you know, from my class, what I believe is going to happen, you know, you can believe anything you want, you know, end-time prophecy is not a salvation issue, with uh, the, the uh, uh, sixth trumpet judgment, where you have the four angels coming out of the great river Euphrates, they're leading an army of 200 million, I believe they're demons, not men, never says they're men, okay? And they wipe out, the, they wipe out a third of the world, and, a third, and the people in that area of the world are, are, uh, are uh, Muslims. And the Muslims, are the, are, along with the Antichrist, are going to be causing Jews trouble. And so the Jews don't have to split their, their, uh, uh, their, their watching of everybody. God's just going to wipe out the Muslims so they only have to uh, uh, follow, you know, to see what the Antichrist is doing to them. Okay? So that's when I think the, the Muslims get wiped out. But the initial thing is the Jews with the temple in Ezekiel 38 and 39, when they start building that, that is going to infuriate the, the, the Muslims, like you said. God intercedes... And when you, uh, and it's early, you know, 38, uh, what is it, 8, 11, and 14, I believe it says, they're at peace. The only time you have peace in the tribulation period is, is, is right at the beginning. And that's when they start to build it. And that infuriates the Jews. Then in uh, 39, I think it's uh, 7, 22, 28, and 29, it says from that, basically in all of them, from that day forward, the Jews will recognize who their Messiah is, who Jesus really is. And that's when the converting of the Jews starts. We didn't all get converted in one day. They're not all going to get converted in one day. God doesn't wait till the end, like a lot of people say, when they, when they see Jesus come in the sky. There are going to be some at the end. You know, they were stubborn enough to wait that long and, you know, and get converted. Um, but God is going to convert them all the way through. That's why you have mobile raptures. Before each one of be, you know, us, before the seal judgments, them, you know, initially, you know, for the ones in Ezekiel 38 and 39 and others that got converted, and, you know, right after we're gone, other uh, Gentiles, oh, gee, I missed it. Hopefully a whole lot of our Catholic friends. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, with the two witnesses, that's, you'll see there's a rapture. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 14, uh, was it 14 to 16, you see that Jesus takes the harvest. That's another rapture. And then there is one at the end where uh, Jesus says, uh, you know, uh, was it uh, Matthew 24? 31 and uh, Mark 13, 27, I think it is. Uh, Jesus says, go, uh, go gather, gather everybody, you know, all the righteous, uh, not only from heaven, but the four winds of earth. So there's going to be converts there. Okay? Question. Okay. I thought we were done with that class, but yeah, go ahead. Um, at this time, whenever the Jews realized that Jesus was their Messiah, mm -hmm. would they be studying like the King James to see about his life and what he... Well, all they were, they you know, just... with all the Bibles we leave behind for free, hopefully they will grab them. Yeah. Okay? You know, hopefully, well, anybody. You know, that's why I told you. You know, keep, keep, uh, when we start getting close, uh, uh, keep my right up open to a pre-trib rapture and, you know, mm -hmm. red circle around it. Mm -hmm. Put, you know, uh, you tell, you know, leave it for the person that's going to break in your house and steal everything yeah. you got. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you don't need it anymore. Yeah. You know, uh, sure. you know, you know, this is why I'm gone. Read on and find out what's next. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the Jews do know Jesus. I Not, they they will. know him as a the prophet. tribulation. And how many times did I tell you what, what are the two things the tribulation period is for? For the Jews to know who their Messiah because, is. Because. Because. Because they didn't think he's come yet. They are what? Stiff No, no. They're, God is no. Why is God what? The chosen people. The what? Are his chosen people. Uh, deeper than that. Wife. Wife, yes. Wife. The wife of God the Father. He's restoring his wife. 
And then for the Gentiles who during this time of yeah. grace, God has made a simple. He says it's a free gift in you know, uh, you know, uh, Romans 5, 15 to 22. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's a free gift. And uh, they say, well, it's free, so therefore it must not be worth anything. Why do I care? What do they okay? think and, and for the Jew, For the Gentiles rejecting during, during, yeah. during our time. Okay. And his judgment. <coughs> okay. Well, now, like a little Jewish boy growing up in a Jewish home, does he know anything about Jesus at all? Um, he knows he's, uh, he's been told not to believe in him. So they okay. don't even believe he's a prophet or was a prophet? They hate him. Or uh, anything? They hate him in, in Israel right now. Do you, vote, you, they do? You, see some of the, you see some of the videos of the Jewish, the, those that say they are Jews. Uh, they Better go out there and they call they they say terrible things about him. Yeah. Because they follow the Talmud, yeah. which is antichrist. Yes. So they're going to have to learn right from scratch. Oh, absolutely. Born in Bethlehem. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, they will. They will. They will. Yeah.